Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, sweetie. What do you think of our new car from Carvana? Think it can handle our busy family? Well, we have seven days to see. First, we can take the scenic route to the beach and stargaze through the moonroof. We'll see if your drums fit in the trunk. Then we can pick up Mommy's friends and check out that leg room. And we should really visit Grandma. She's getting up there. That's like... A whole lifetime in seven days. And like one busy family. With our seven-day money-back guarantee, you can confidently shop for cars 100% online. Visit Carvana.com for all terms and conditions. We'll drive you happy at Carvana. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. Glad to have you with me. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Be patient on the phones. I will get to you. A friend of mine and I were talking the other day, and, and it, it raises a question. How many, the, it, there is this belief, and I've talked about the disinformation and how the media focuses on disinformation on the right and ignores disinformation on the left. How many of you believe things because you have been induced over time to believe them? And he was raising this subject because he works for a Fortune 500 company where one of the senior executives wants to update and change their policies on health care to cover abortion costs. And if a woman lives in a state where she cannot get one to cover her costs of going out of state to get one and said, matter of factly, the woman said, matter of factly, that it's uh, far less of a burden on their health care to cover the cost of abortion than maternity leave. Just as a matter of fact statement. And it, by the way, it is true. Uh, how many women have been induced to believe abortion is their right uh, by a corporate America that wants them in the workforce without having to pay their maternity leave? Uh, how many women uh, have been induced to believe that equality means that instead of staying home and raising their children and cooking supper the, for the family, equality really means that they can uh, go to work nine to five, come home, cook supper for the family and raise the kids and still do all the other stuff they had to do before they had to go to work? I know there will be people who call me a terrible misogynist for saying these things. I get it. But as is one of those interesting things, I saw a video the other day. It was circulated by a pastor, uh, but it was a woman who had done it who was pointing these things out that why can't I stay home and take care of the kids and make my husband go earn all the money? <laughs> there are times I wonder why can't I get my wife to go to work and and, and make some of the money instead of just spending money? She would shoot me if I, if I said that to her. Um, <laughs> but still, on, on, on the abortion issue, um, is, is it really an equal right uh, when obviously a man can't get pregnant to begin with? Um, or is it uh, something women have been believed is in their good and is a right uh, because uh, the collective conscious of corporate America would far rather pay for an abortion uh, than lose a woman to rearing a child? It's one of the reasons, by the way, as a matter of fact, that there is uh, an income gap in this country is it's not per se an income gap. It's that women and men make different life choices, and many women do leave the workforce for a time or reduce their hours so they can stay home and raise kids, and it affects pay. And that doesn't quite come out of the equations and, and the comparables when looking at pay. It's just something to think about. And I raise that as something that, that people say to make you believe things when maybe it's not true. On that aspect, and now pivot rapidly to a different aspect, climate change. There was a story a while back I talked about where there's a massive algae bloom in the San Francisco Bay. It was gross. It was It stunk. It was devastating, and it was climate change. The ocean waters had gotten warm enough that it caused this to happen. Well, we now know that's not true. The final research is in. Turns out it didn't have anything to do with climate change, though that's what they all blamed. 
It had to do with massive sewage runoff from San Francisco, where so many people are pooping in the streets that as it has rained, it has washed stuff into the stormwater system instead of the separate sewage system, and it has spilled out into San Francisco Bay. And there has been so much human feces swept out to San Francisco Bay, it has caused this massive algae bloom. It has uh, everything to do with public policy and nothing to do with climate change, and yet climate change is what the left hides behind so that they don't have to deal with their own incompetent prescriptions for how to solve the world's problems. And this gets me back to what I wrote earlier, and I do need to just kind of read some of this to you. If you text the word DATA to 33777, you can get this piece and share it with your friends. Population declined. Global temperatures rising. Mass migration of people from destabilized destabilized regions increased. Wind and solar energy supplied the planet its power. That was the Dark Ages. On September 4th, 476, Romulus Augustus stepped down from the throne of the Western Roman Empire under pressure from a German, and the world entered the Dark Ages. That is the moment the world entered the Dark Ages, according to historians, the fall of the Western Roman Empire on September 4th, 476. It lasted until the year 1000. 1,022 years after the end of the Dark Ages, Again, populations are declining, again, temperatures are rising, and again, people are moving restlessly about the planet, and again, wind and solar are increasingly our forms of power, this time because of environmentalists who are plunging us back into a new dark ages. Much of what environmentalists claim is climate change is actually caused by inept, corrupt, inefficient policies by progressive politicians. California is beginning this new dark ages by literally going dark. Their power grid, actually, to their credit, enough people have turned off the power that they have avoided most of the blackouts and the energy strain. A friend of mine texted me yesterday. He was on a Zoom call with a guy. So the guy was uh, sweating so profusely. He was in Los Angeles. The guy was sweating so profusely. My buddy asked him if he was sick, and he said no. Uh, They've got the air conditioner turned off in their home. It's 110 degrees, but they're trying to avoid the blackouts and the energy grid strains. So the power is out in their house voluntarily to avoid straining the power grid. The state's power suppliers in California were told by California, you will switch to green energy. And if you don't do it as quickly as we want, you'll be fined. So what those power producers had to do was skip upgrading the power lines and the power grid and instead go to those wind and solar sources. As a result, the power grid deteriorated over time. Now it's causing forest fires as it sparks and gets overheated. The grid was designed for high heat, but the lines need to be upgraded and they can't be upgraded because those power companies were going to get fined if they didn't roll over to green energy soon enough. So it was the policy of the state that caused the problems, not climate change. Environmental policy is inherently Malthusian. Malthus, Robert Malthus, was a uh, right reverend and theologian in Great Britain who believed that as population grew, uh, food would grow and then population would grow again as a result. And because of abundance, a population would grow and population would cause short supplies and mass starvation and mass death. And uh, there is now an entire movement of people called Malthusians who believe that uh, population must be controlled so that humanity does not otherwise wind up miserable. The entire and entirely unspoken premise of most of the environmental movement today is Malthusian. Humanity's got to suffer so the planet survives. There need to be less of us living and those of us who survive need to live in worse conditions and other to, otherwise to save Mother Earth. Now, a lot of progressives will object to me saying this. You got to understand, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you, but a lot of progressives are going to object. But the reality is that most environmentalists believe we're overpopulated, we're running out of resources, the free market can't management, it's got to be command and control. And people are going to suffer because we got to save the planet. And part of this is a conversion to wind and solar energy, but they're not baseload power. 
A switch cannot be flipped to get them to generate power. They're inefficient power supplies. There aren't enough batteries. There's not enough lithium. And environmentalists, deep down, they know this and they don't care. In Europe, they're headed dark. Power is not on. And when it is on, it's too expensive for people to use. So power is going to be rationed. People are literally going to die this winter in Europe because of power bills and power shortages and the lack of heat. People will die. We're seeing this in California a week after they mandated new vehicles all be electric within a decade. They want electric vehicles. They're advising them, get this, to either not plug them in or use gas generators to charge them. They have less than 600,000 electric vehicles and want to convert the 38 other million vehicles to batteries, and yet they can't plug in the 600,000 they have to the power grid. They would need 20 new nuclear reactors to make up the kilowatt hours needed to plug in all these new electric cars, and they're not going to build them. If we don't get serious about nuclear energy in this country, we're going to wind up like California, which is going to wind up like Europe. It will be the new norm, and we will be back in a new dark ages. And all of this has got me thinking, and it's stuff I've said before, but I think it needs to be said again, that, uh, you know, in the Dark Ages, a lot of superstitions began to grow. Towards the end of the Roman Empire, as Christianity was settling into the Roman Empire, uh, the Roman Empire started going through, to some degree, a bit of a renaissance with scientific thinking, embracing the old Athenians and the Aristotelian system, and then the whole thing collapsed. Knowledge recessed into monasteries. And people began to devolve back into mythologies and superstitions to explain the way the world worked from medicine to to you name it. Superstitions and sophist thinking spread. And nowadays, you got a lot of people who embrace their inner chakras, align their chi, and get their healing magic crystals, believe men can get pregnant, And they all tend to be the loudest voices of environmental lunacy. Creation thinks it's now the creator and they're going to create a hell on earth with pseudoscience, loud screams and sophistry about climate change to cover their incompetence. And people are going to die. It's entirely preventable. The power going out in this country is a choice made by progressives imposed on the rest of us. And we don't have to make the choice. Build nuclear power. But it's all the things people tell themselves that they smugly sometimes often believe whether or not it's really real. Women are convinced abortion is a necessary female right to keep them in the workforce so companies don't have to pay maternity leave. And the whole of the left in this country believes climate change is to blame for all of society's ills. And they're told that and believe that to keep them from actually recognizing that so many of the problems we have are not climate change, but public policy choices made by Malthusians who want to many of us out and keep the rest of us miserable all to save the planet they worship we should probably realign our thinking now before i go to break mike has been waiting patiently and i want to get to mike mike welcome to the show sorry to keep you waiting so long hey eric thanks for taking my call sure um so i'm with a group called uh, abf um i'm curious do you think todd starnes looks more like an adult uh yeah okay that's one reason i kept him waiting towards the bitter end because that was kind of our suspicion okay now that being said we will move on to other things because there actually is other news today beyond this uh i do have to give california some credit here out of the gate because california uh, has managed thus far to keep the lights on but they're doing it in some cases because people are turning off their power and in other cases the people in California are having their power turned off for them by the power company because they decided to get those smart thermostats. And the smart thermostats, if you take the incentives box, now several people have told me this. If you take the incentives from the power company installing your Nest thermostat or your Ecobi thermostat, the incentive that they give you to install it allows them to regulate your power. 
So if you put in a smart thermostat and you don't take the incentives, you buy it yourself and you have an electrician install your smart thermostat, you don't have to worry about the power company taking control of it. If the power company offers it to you and gives you incentives to install it, the power company wants to control it. So I, I have to walk back some of my prior reservations. I had wanted one until I started reading the stories about the power companies turning people's air conditioners off or, or raising them. And the actual thing is explained to me by several people inside and outside the power industry is if you buy a smart thermostat, an Ecobee, a Nest, or a Honeywell, or some of the other varieties out there, if you buy it yourself and install it, you don't have to worry. If, however, the power company installs it for you, you have to worry about them raising your heat or uh, raising your air conditioner or lowering your heat. And so don't let the power company do it. If you want one of these, do it yourself. And now I'm back to wanting one because I really want to be able to raise the, the temperature or lower it based on my cell phone and my iPhone, which reminds me, do I have to get up at 3 a.m. to order Charlie's new iPhone tomorrow or are they going to do it at 80? I need to check that. The new iPhones, you can order them tomorrow. I got to order Charlie one and make him use it. We'll be back. So this has provoked some questioning here and I actually have the answer because I've had several people now text me who are listening and now I've seen a couple emails uh, come through to me and I got a direct message on the exact same thing. Literally, uh, probably about a dozen people have just now Ask me the entire same question in um, in in direct messages, emails, and text messages, and the like. And I've got the answer because uh, I thought about it too. So I guess we're all thinking the same thing. What if you buy a house that already has a smart thermostat in it, a Nest, an Ecobee, a Honeywell makes one? What if you buy a house that the power company's already installed one? You are allowed to opt out. Um, essentially, what happens in a lot of states. Uh, XL Energy in Colorado did this. They came into a lot of the houses of XL Energy customers and they offered discounts on power for an amount of time if you allowed the power company to install a new smart thermostat that connected to the power company. You are allowed to opt out. And in fact, uh, when you take over the power bill of a house that has one of these thermostats installed, you can at that time tell them you don't want to participate. Uh, and that seems to be the case everywhere. Uh, and a a listener actually just told me that, let me read you his tweet back to me. Um, as I'm installing the smart thermostats, I skip the step that connects with the utility provider. The homeowner has to allow access to be granted. You can skip that step. And a second listener tells me you can go back through and um and 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 say no um and change those out. Also, uh, the Ecobi um is the one that I want. I don't like the Nest ones because I don't really want Google to have access to that information. Uh, Nest is owned by Google, and Google does not respect your privacy in any way, shape, or form. So I would never buy a Nest. The Ecobi is the one I've been looking for. So I actually very much like Apple's HomeKit. The reason I like the HomeKit, they don't have as many options with Apple's HomeKit as with other um, smart home systems. The reason I prefer Apple's, even though there aren't as many products, is because it is deeply, deeply secure. Uh, it is highly unlikely your house is going to be hacked because everything has to come with a certain code and have a certain chip, and they've opened the standard now to get away from that. Uh, but if you buy the ones that are primarily Apple HomeKit, uh, there are it's very, very hard for someone outside your house to access the system and hack it uh, and, and get access to your cameras and stuff. So I appreciate that in the Ecobi is a system that was built first as an Apple HomeKit system. It's the one I want. Uh, I got to get uh, an upgrade there. We're, we're upgrading our um, security system at our house with Owen Security here in Atlanta. And after I get the security system upgraded, I got to get the thermostat upgraded. Now that I know it's safe to get a smart thermostat and the power company can't turn off my power, um, of course, I don't know that that would happen in Georgia because we have Georgia Power and they actually uh, have smartly managed their power grid system, unlike some of these other power companies out there. But nonetheless, I digress. I got to tell you about Omaha Steaks. If you go to omahasteaks.com and you put Eric, E-R-I-C-K in the search bar, you can get the All-American Assortment. It is a delicious assortment of some of the best of Omaha Steaks. You get a 100% satisfaction guarantee from a company that's been doing this for over 100 years, so they know what they're doing. You also get over 50% off and 12 burgers for free. Now, listen, you can go to omahasteaks.com, put Eric in the search bar. You can see the package for yourself. If you scroll down, 
You can build your own package, pick what meats you want, what side you want, which dessert you want. You still get the 12 burgers for free. But I want to spend a time here just emphasizing something else that I don't talk about enough. If you were to go to the grocery store and get all of the stuff in one of these Omaha Steak packages, not only would the quality not be as high as the quality that you get from Omaha Steaks, but you would pay a whole lot more money for it. So that's one thing to think about when you want to find a good cut of meat you can get better quality at Omaha Steaks than you'll get at the grocery store. It's conveniently packaged for you. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee on like the grocery store. And all you do is go to omahasteaks.com and put Eric, E-R-I-C-K, in the search bar. I don't know what's going on. All right, Jim, can you hear me? All righty. I have no idea what's happening there. Had to disconnect and reconnect. There's breaking news. Flags are lowering at Buckingham Palace right now. Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland has died at age 96. Here is some of the commentary and news happening right now uh, around the world. This is the biggest news story of the day. Keeps the name Charles, whether he's King Charles or he chooses another name. We will get details on that when um, a placard is uh, put up there on the forecourt at Buckingham Palace where he will... Uh, the formal announcement will be made and we'll, there'll be a reference to his name. Uh, we know that uh, Camilla is now the Queen Consort, so she is Queen Camilla. Uh, Prince William is now the um, Duke of Cornwall. Um, he will inevitably become the Prince of Wales because that's something, a title that will come to him. And he takes over the Duchy of Cornwall and uh, now Prince George is second in line to the throne. So this is a huge moment in British history and Commonwealth history and I think for the world because I think she transcended actually monarchy and I think she was a truly global figure and um, one who has a guaranteed place in the history books and I'm now looking down at those people gathering outside the palace gates and I think those numbers will escalate and it will be a very emotional scene as this news sets in. Christian? It is very extraordinary to hear Max describe what's happened and keep using the word King Charles, or sorry, King, the King, the new King, because for 70 years this country and the world has only known a Queen. queen that's uh, CNN covers literally. Um, you don't believe me how big of a story this is. Uh, over to you, Fox Business. Then, of course, yes. uh, Charles taking over as King of England. Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot. Here's Newsmax. The trust will listen uh, to nominate the Queen as Elizabeth the Great. Which this is Fox News. Eisenhower. She would go on to meet every U.S. president during her reign, except Lyndon Johnson. More this open, is MSNBC. compassionate, in touch with a changing British public. Institutions which in turn must continue to evolve if they are to provide effective beacons of trust and unity. She and is this is Bloomberg. Shift in terms of the U.K., and its perception of itself, its perception of the, in, in the world. What will happen over the next few days, though, um, is, is a sense of reflection. The, every world news outlet right now, regardless of language, is covering this as the biggest story of the day. Uh, it actually is. It is a transcendent moment in American and global history. Yes, even our American history for 70 years. Elizabeth II has sat on the throne of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and now she gets to shake George Washington's hand. Uh, wouldn't you like to be there for that? Um, she was born in London. She was the first child of the Duke and Duchess of York, who himself, George VI, only became uh, king because his brother abdicated the one and only time uh, that a British monarch abdicated, putting her then in line to be the monarch uh, to Elizabeth sitting on the throne of Great Britain. Um, well, Elizabeth I of England, Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom. She's actually not considered Elizabeth II in Scotland because Elizabeth I was not the Queen of Scotland. Unlike this one, crowned in 1953, she is the second longest serving monarch in history after uh, Louis XIV of France, who took the throne as a child. Uh, she only became the second uh, longest serving monarch by about 50 days, transcending a king of Thailand. 
uh, just a remarkable person in history. She was in the Second World War uh, as a mechanic, volunteered for the Second World War. There's actually a great story that King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, a nation where until recently women were not allowed to drive, uh, he was invited to go to Balmoral to spend time with the royal family, and he went and was told he would be given a tour of the, it's, it's several hundred thousand acres that the British royal family uh, lives on up there, and he was going to be given a tour of the land. He climbed into the uh, Land Rover, and who should get into the uh, driver's seat but the queen? Women are not allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia. No woman is allowed to drive the king of Saudi Arabia ever anywhere, and yet here's the queen of England driving the king of Saudi Arabia around, who, according to reports, uh, emphasized with her the entire time to please keep her eye on the road, uh, was not used to a woman who drove in wartime in England and was a mechanic. Uh, she was notorious for being able to tell the mechanics what was wrong with her vehicles and get them to fix it. A uh, rather down-to-earth person. Uh, this is the breaking news happening right now around the world uh, shortly before 1.31 p.m. today. Uh, Buckingham Palace and the royal family announced Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and more, as head of the Commonwealth, has passed away. She was 96 years old, the longest lived and longest reigning British monarch, uh, the oldest and longest serving incumbent head of state, and the second longest verifiable reigning sovereign monarch in world history. Fascinating times and a fascinating woman. Her son will have to choose his regnal name. Now, Elizabeth, if you've ever seen The Crown, very pragmatically decided she was fine with her own name. Uh, there have been rumors that Charles would not keep his name, largely because the history of the crown's name Charles, uh, well, they, they didn't go over so well with the British people. Uh, none of them are apparently allowed to be named James, given James II's uh, situation. But Charles I, of course, beheaded. Uh, Charles II restored the monarchy, but uh, converted allegedly on deathbed to Catholicism and left the monarchy in some degree of scandal. We'll see what he does. Uh, the, but the question has been settled about his wife. Uh, she will be the Queen of England. Uh, Camilla will. There were lots of people who claimed that she would not be, uh, but she will be. So we will now move on to other things. My apologies to those who were on hold and dropped off, but uh, this is kind of news that has to be covered today. Uh, born in 1926, died in 2022. Elizabeth, Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain, Northern Ireland, and the Commonwealth Nations, is now at rest, returned with her husband, the last Christian monarch of Great Britain. Now, we will move on. Some people, by the way, I realize will probably take issue with that last statement, but it actually is true. Now, um, and it actually is a, a defining moment as we as things shift there into a post-Christian era. How does it look? Uh, Charles, of course, has wanted to be the uh, defender of the faiths, not defender of the faith. So we'll see. I want to move on to something else. All of the networks are covering uh, the death of Elizabeth II. Fox will probably actually be able to give a little more detailed coverage than most because it has Sky News, which is a British outlet. But typically, when things around the world happen, the network that people to this day tune into is CNN because CNN tends to have a better network around the world uh, than many other news outlets. And CNN is in turmoil right now. And if you're a regular listener of this program, and I get complaints occasionally from listeners, please shut up about this topic. But I actually, uh, I am fascinated by what's going on there right now. And, and I want to talk about this for just a moment. So please show me a little grace and bear with me here because uh, Brian Stelter is out. John Harwood is out. And there are those at CNN who are openly complaining behind the scenes. Does this new guy, Chris Lick, think that we're going to uh, both sides democracy? The story here is not really about CNN. And, and maybe we should push this out. And hopefully some folks at CNN will see this. I think CNN made a mistake leaving Atlanta as their headquarters and becoming so New York centric. Uh, because it was something that distinguished CNN over time. They utilized it less and less as a moniker of the network. But Ted Turner was, for all of his faults, very smart to build a news network in Atlanta uh, 
that has the most heavily trafficked airport in the world where you can hop a flight and get anywhere in the world very easily compared to a lot of other places. In fact, though you can at JFK in New York, it's it's far more difficult to get around the world from there just because of air travel, traffic, and navigating that airport compared to Atlanta. More importantly, though, it is highly notable that there is a meltdown among progressives about CNN right now. You don't hear anybody on the right lamenting that John Harwood and Brian Stelter are out at CNN. You don't hear anyone lamenting that possibly Don Lemon will be out at CNN. You don't hear any conservatives complaining about a shakeup at CNN. And the reason is because even while I was at CNN, CNN was obviously a network where most of the people leaned to the left. The difference between then and now is that while I was at CNN, and I was there for three years and still have a lot of friends there, was at Fox for five years after that, still have a lot of good friendships with people at CNN, Some, many of whom were there while I was there, a number of whom have come since I was there. The thing that the left is upset about is not that there's a shakeup at CNN, but they believe that the right will have to be given a fair hearing at CNN. And if Chris Lick would listen to me, if I could get his attention for just one moment and those in senior management at CNN, I would note for them that it would be highly important for them to note only the left is complaining about this decision. And it is not because the left somehow thinks that CNN will pervert the news, but because the left seems to think that they have a lock on the truth of the news, and they don't. Just because the left sees the world in a way does not mean the world works in that way. Uh, WPA intelligence, I've mentioned the disinformation that comes from the left, and it's very notable the number of things that CNN viewers themselves believe that simply are not true. I recounted that information for you earlier today, and it's something I think that uh, the management at CNN should note, that CNN has in fact over time become a place where you had progressives who worked and were mindful of their biases and worked to accommodate those biases. And now at this point, They're very, uh, have embraced many of the biases that Chris Licht, I think, wants them to get away with, away from. 67% of Democrats and 62% of CNN viewers believe Florida banned the word gay in schools. I should not allowed to say the word gay in school. Now, you think that's bad. 67% of MSNBC viewers believe that. And college-educated Democratic women, 74% of them believe that. It's, It's simply not true. I hope the management at CNN will ignore the bellyaching of the left about CNN moving not to the right, but to a balance. There is a growing conversation among people almost uniformly on the left that there shouldn't be a balance in the press covering both sides, that there is a right side and a wrong side and they should cover news from the right side and inevitably the left believes it is their side that is the right side. We live in a day and age where the most dangerous thing happening in our democracy and in the media is that neither side now has to understand what the other side believes. And when neither side has to understand what the other side believes, it becomes very easy to vilify the side you don't understand. It is far more likely for a conservative in this country to have progressive friends than it is for a progressive to have conservative friends. That's reflected down to the college level where a progressive college student is more likely to not want a Republican or Trump supporter as a roommate than a Republican or Trump supporter is to want a, a progressive for a roommate. You're more likely to find a Republican who's willing to have a Democratic roommate, a Trump supporter who's willing to have a progressive roommate than the other way around. So much of the news media has not just leaned left in its editorial biases, but now brought it out without any hope of trying to present a fair and balanced view of the other side, that it has corrupted a lot of people's views of the other side in America. If there's one thing CNN could do to improve the world and the news gathering apparatus and its ability to show the news, it is to not vilify or characterize or caricature the people of the right badly but to allow the people of the right to have their own voices heard. 
I have said for years, going back to when I was at CNN and then even when I was at Fox, one of the growing dangers of our society, particularly with the press, is that the left has decided that they should be the arbiters of who is on television, even for the right. That a voice that people on the right finds to be credible, sane, and rational can still be vilified and exiled by people on the left when they object. And it's a terrible thing for either side, the left or the right, to believe that they have the power to regulate the voices of the other side heard on television. And so if I could just get the attention of the people at CNN, I would tell them, do the news and do it fairly. And yes, cover the both sides of it. Don't pick an editorial stance that you believe is true. Explain why the other side sees the world differently, even if you disagree. But also, don't allow either side the power. My side included when it comes to the left. Do not allow either side the power to regulate who of their political opponents can show up on television. And I would also admonish the network that over the past few years under Jeff Zucker, most of the voices they have on the right, with very few exceptions, Scott Jennings being one of the excellent exceptions at CNN, they don't allow people on the right who have anything nice to say about Donald Trump to come on. They're conservative voices, are conservative voices who have moved on because they've been broken by Donald Trump, so many of them. You need to find people who can accurately represent and call out their own side. You shouldn't just have apologists for a political party on. I've always found that the most interesting voices of the left and the right are the ones who can criticize their own side. And more and more on TV now, you're not allowed to have that option where someone on the right can criticize the GOP. Too many of the people on the right on these networks, CNN and MSNBC, can only criticize the GOP these days, meaning they're not of the right anymore. It's something they need to think about and improve and not let all the belly aching from the left dissuade them from cleaning up that network. Now, you may need to clean up your retirement portfolio, and you don't need to bellyache about it as well. You might want to reach out to my friends at GoldCo and see if they can help you. If you call them at 855-904-5933, you can get a free wealth protection kit from them to learn how to use gold and silver to protect and grow your money. Thousands of retirees are protecting their retirement savings. Many are getting $10,000 or more in free silver for doing it. Call my friends at Goldco, find out how you qualify for their offer. They've helped thousands of Americans protect their retirement savings from inflation, from stock market crashes. They want to be able to help you. Their number again, 855-904-5933. You can also text the word ERIC, E-R-I-C-K. You can text it to 33777, and I will text you back their toll-free number. Call Goldco, just see if they're a good fit for you, if you've ever thought about using precious metals in your retirement planning. All right, the breaking news, if you're out and about and haven't heard it yet, although pretty much every TV and radio network in America, music or otherwise, is covering it. Uh, The Queen of England is dead. Uh, The King has not yet announced his regnal name. We will not say Charles, as there's a rumor afoot. He may go with George instead. Um, There is a rainbow that has now appeared over um, Buckingham Palace. So, interesting. Now... Um, we do have other things that we have to move on to. This is the big news of the day, but also there's other news out there and we've got to shift. We've got to pivot to talk about the economy because yesterday I spent some time on the economy, but uh, there's more to be said because there's a report out that is all but begging the Federal Reserve not to raise interest rates further. At the same time, the Federal Reserve is reiterating it intends to raise interest rates further. And also, um, the, um, The European Union's uh, central bank has gone ahead and raised interest rates three quarters of a percentage point. And I want to try to explain all of this to you, make sense of it to you, and also explain to you that, that some bad things are probably coming in the economy as a result of it. Um, including a recession, how that will impact the elections is yet to be seen, although there are some suggestions there that as voters are starting now to pay attention, uh, there could be more shakeups in the polling that are advantageous to the GOP. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. 
Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.